I hope you can hear me. It's a storm test night for the Verne 2. I've just arrived at the summit on the northwest side of Allswater. The winds are blowing around a constant 35 and hitting up to 40. So I'm going to get the dog in some shelter and get the Verne 2 pitched. Now what I've got for the dog is the German dog lair. It's a specialised bit of military equipment, but this is the dog version. So I'll get a sheltered in here. Got a zip, hold. Honey, come here. Honey, in your bed. Good to see you in there. How's that? in this end. Got it all pitched out. Now to get the pole framework on. Start to rain, nasty. I wish I had two people. process it's been blowing between 25 and 40 mile an hour I'm gonna double guy at this end now it's a big tent getting a little bit depressed this end getting a bit depressed this end so got some extra guys to put on here where the full force of the wind is coming on I hope you can hear me <laughs> oh quick stop in the squalls They're pretty nasty the dog's inside now, but uh, yeah, other than a bit of a depression, this end uh, looks nice. Hard work on your own though. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I've got that double guide now. These are extra guys I keep with me just for such fun occasions. And I've double pegged all this end, so Tent's going nowhere, right. Okay, I've got the dog dried off and she's in her waterproof bag there. And she'll keep her moisture inside there until I can get her a bit more dried off. And I've got a insulated lining to go in that as well. Now it's time to try and get myself warm and dry. Whoosh. Shut this door, shut the night out. Okay, so she's had some food and now she's inside the liner, inside a bag there. Fantastic. How was that? Okay. Cozy. So how is the tent holding up against this 30 mile an hour driving rain? Now you'll notice 
a couple of damp patches here and that's from where it uh, is open a little bit there it was blowing in through there and I've shut those the seam lines all absolutely fine you can see the rain hitting the tent there up here is all dry the odd bit of moisture there but I can't see anything on the seams again I think I had it this open before and it was driving in under there overall it's noisy but uh, I feel pretty happy to be here really time to have a little bit of a break now and get in the sleeping bag and get warm and have something to eat I've had my tea before uh, I came out I left the family uh, down at the caravan that's not far from Pooley Bridge so they're all fine down there and I've just come uh, have a night by myself I'll not share it on YouTube but I lost somebody dear this week and uh, uh, just need a bit of thinking time really hey it's strong dust getting a bit of a collapse here I don't know what the winds are doing at the moment but this ends buckling down Bouncing back up again. Might be time for some double poling though. Okay, that's not gusted there, I don't think, above 39 mile an hour, which I measured it before, that's hitting the 30s plus now, I'm getting a little bit of bowing at that end. This wet's just from when I've had the door open. worried because there's uh, no signs of any sort of material failure at all uh, and if you had a tunnel tent in these winds that end would be severely scooped down just like this is so my recommendation is if you're anticipating winds approaching 40 miles an hour plus think about double poling really uh, and I'm definitely going to be seam sealing it because there is a little bit of beading on the seen that it's exposed to this 30 plus driving rain bag to survive in. I could just zip that up and wrap myself up inside with my layers on and I'll be fine. The dog will be fine too. Okay I've had a cold break, time to get out of here. 
one of the blue poles has snapped so time to start calmly just stuffing my gear in my bag and get myself and the dog down the hill safely pack up as quickly as possible get my waterproofs on get down the hill dogs not plus at all the tent's collapsing on top of it you're just lying there calm brilliant dog my rule now about no boots in the tent good to know I've got the Pearl Dukin with me so when I'm evacuating out of here now I'll keep this handy and if I need to shelter I can just get in this and I've also got one for the dog as well Just check to <clears throat> make everything sure everything's secure on my bag. Just shoved pegs in there and the poles in there. Shove the tent in the top. My German bag there and the dog German bag. So pretty sure I've got everything. Let's see if I can get those in there a bit better. Even though they're broken. Okay. So yeah, you saw what happened there. Uh, total collapse at the end, three poles broken. All the ones across the middle. Uh, a real shame. I feel very sorry for what's happened. But, you know, all bits of equipment has its limits. And uh, I found it tonight. Okay, it's just a case now of uh, picking ourselves down this steep, grassy, rocky hillside. It's only about, uh, what, a mile and a half down back to the car. So, not too bad. The uh, hill I've been up is called Watermillock Common. It's, uh, it's about 500 metres. So, it's an easy climb, but as you've seen, fairly exposed on the top. I'll give a little bit of a debrief when I get back to the car. Okay, good, back at the car. Dogs dried off, safe in a crate. Thirsty, a little bit shell-shocked, and uh, a bit sad, really, about what's happened with the tent. But I'm always one for not believing that wind happened unless it's proven. Now, when I was pitching the tent, it was steady between 25 and 35 and gusting up to 40. I measured that. And then when I was in the tent, I kept sticking my arm, my arm out and getting kind of like 25 to 35. And then I had some bangs and gusts, but the end of the tent sort of stayed a little bit suppressed and then kept, kept getting banged down more. And some of those heavy squalls, I'd only be guessing, but you know, it was definitely above 40 mile an hour. 
I don't think it was above 50, but somewhere above, above 40. And that caused one of the end poles to snap. And then as I was taking the tent down and started to release some pressure for some of the guys, uh, or the two poles, the hoop poles, followed suit. So I had three broken poles then, and the, the tent was uh, pancaked. The dog was still inside up to this point, she catapulted us out. But fortunately I had the dog German layer for it and I could wrap her back up in that and keep her safe and dry. So that's a bit of equipment I'm never going to be without. So before anything happens about this, this video, I'm going to speak to Nortent uh, tomorrow and give them some feedback. But in its present state now, uh, the Nortent Vern 2 remains a great tent but uh, to be on the safe side I wouldn't plan to use it in winds uh, predicted any stronger than 30 miles an hour at this time so for it to be kind of like really four season storm worthy there's evidently going to have to be some changes to make and whether that's to habitually double pole it uh, or the pole diameter or design or manufacturer changes I don't know that's not up to me it's just up to me to uh, feed that back to your tent and i'm sure they'll be super responsive thanks for watching and we're safe and fine